Hi, and welcome to another Real Time Faith lesson discussion for early teens class. I'm so glad you can join me as we study together again from God's Word. Now, this is the new year, and we welcome you to another year, 2021. 2020 has not been great, and we don't expect better things in 2021. Why? Because our Lord said that it would be this way. Before He comes, we expect pestilences, diseases that would spread across the world, epidemics. We would expect wars, rumors of wars. We would expect famines, droughts, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, all sorts of natural disasters. These are the signs that our Lord is coming quickly. And we as Christians should be praying earnestly, getting ready for His coming. And we should also look forward to His coming with joy. In spite of whatever is going on around us, we should look forward to it. The Lord is coming soon. Now our lesson this week is on Jesus' second coming and how fitting it is given that we've entered into the new year. So please, before we start, close your eyes, bow your heads, and we pray together. Our gracious, merciful Father who art in heaven, Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Father, we ask that you may be with us. May you open our hearts and minds, Lord, as we study your word. We thank you and praise you, dear Father, for everything. We ask you, Lord, this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as I said, our lesson this week is on Jesus' second coming. And there's a beautiful story inside our lesson. The story is about a famous explorer called Sir Ernest Shackleton. Now, Sir Ernest Shackleton lived in England and he wanted to explore the Antarctic continent. So he took a bunch of men with him and they went to Antarctica in his famous ship called Endurance. And on his first voyage to Antarctica in 1914, his ship was trapped in ice and the ice destroyed his ship. And as a result, him and his men were stranded on ice for about five months before they eventually made their way to Elephant Island. Now on Elephant Island, he left some of his men there and he left someone in charge. And then he took a small boat with a few men and they went all the way to the nearest island they could get to, where there was civilization. And when they got there, they mounted a rescue response to try and save the men who were left behind on Elephant Island. But on the first trip, the ice wouldn't allow them through. So they came back again. On the second trip, the ice was the victor again. And on the third trip, the same. The ice just covered the whole sea and they couldn't get through. And finally, on the fourth voyage there to save them, they got through the ice. And when they came upon the men, what do you think the state of these men were? Believe it or not, these men were not downcast. They were not depressed. They were not unwell in any kind of way. They were actually happy. Their spirits were up. And they were looking forward to the returning of their master. Now, do you know the secret as to why these men were happy? The secret to their happiness and good outlook laid in the person whom they put in charge. He kept his fellow men hopeful. He kept them looking forward to the master's returning. And he never made them feel that the master was not going to come back. That his promise was sure. Did you know that our Lord Jesus' promise of return in his second coming is more certain than Sir Ernest Shackleton's promise to his men more than a hundred years ago? Our Lord is certainly coming back. And He is in need of men and women, young boys and girls, who will be hopeful and looking forward to His return, living lives that show that He is coming back very soon. As Jesus Himself said in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. In My Father's house are many mansions, and I am going to prepare a place for you so that I can come and take you to be with me where I am. Now the Lord's promise is sure, and He is coming back. But why hasn't He come back yet? I think that's the question that we really need to look at. We know that when He comes, every eye will see Him. We know that when He comes, there will be a great cataclysmic event. This whole world will be turned upside down. And the Lord Jesus will bang those clouds open and He will come to take His children home. And those who have persecuted His children, those who have stood with the devil, they will be destroyed at His coming. But the question is, why? Why has Jesus not come yet? 
It's been more than 2,000 years since Jesus made that promise of return. And He hasn't come yet. Why hasn't He come yet? Now if you look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says that the Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but He is long-suffering, not willing that any of His children should perish. Yes, the Lord is waiting for us. It's not something else that needs to happen. Everything that is necessary to happen has more or less happened already. The Lord is just waiting upon us. If you look at Matthew 24 verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. You see, when God asks us to preach the gospel, it's not just speaking the good news, not just showing the good news for people to look at and to read and understand, or to hear and understand. What the Lord wants us to do when He asks us to preach the gospel of the kingdom is to live lives that are transformed by the truth. You see, many of us are not transformed by the truth. And for this very reason, the Lord is waiting upon us. So that when we start to let our light shine, and then the whole world sees the light, then the Lord will come. The light must shine so that those who are in darkness have no excuse for remaining in the dark. They have to come into the light, renounce their deeds of evil and walk with the Lord, accept His call of salvation. But the only way that the gospel can be preached unto the people is through our converted lives. We need to live lives that show that the Lord is coming. We need to live lives that show that we believe in our Lord and Savior. We need to live lives that show that we don't love the things of this world, that we are not worldly, that we are consecrated and that we are holy, a peculiar people. Once we start living like that, then the Lord will surely come. And if you look at Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30, there is a parable about a man sowing good seed. And he sows this good seed in his field. And at night when he goes to sleep, there is an enemy of his who comes and sows tares among the wheat. And as the blade grows forth and it starts to bear fruit, his workers realize that tares have been sowed amongst the wheat. Now the thing about wheat and tares, they look very similar. But the only way you can tell them apart is when they are ripe for harvest. The tares bear these black kind of little berries and the wheat, when they are laden with grain, they fall over. They don't stand up proud but they fall over. So those who have the character and the image of Jesus in them, they are bowed down with humility and service to their Master and King. And it is for this reason that they look very similar, that Jesus says to His servants when they realize what has happened, not to go and try and remove the tears, since they may also remove the wheat with the tears, but to let both of them grow together until the time of the harvest, and then they will first gather up the tares, bind them to be burned, and then they will gather up the wheat. God is waiting for us to produce fruits of righteousness. God is not slack concerning His promise of return. It is up to us to express the image of Jesus to everyone, to reflect it perfectly, and then He will come back. Let me read a passage from one of my favorite authors, Ellen White, and I believe what she's written here is inspired by God, and it speaks of the reason why our Lord has not returned yet. And she writes, Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of Himself in His church, when the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in His people. Then He will come to claim them as His own. Christ is waiting for us to perfectly reproduce His character in us. Then He will come. As the Lord Jesus said, The harvest is truly plenty, but the workers are few. There are very few people who truly reflect the fullness of the image and character of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you living your life to reflect Jesus' character? Are you like Jesus? Does your community see you like Jesus? Does your family see you like Jesus? Do your friends see you like Jesus? Do your schoolmates see you like Jesus? Do your workmates see you like Jesus? What's your answer? We have a new year. Let us not let this year go on again. 
Let us live to the fullness of the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. And He will come back this year. It's up to us. We are the ones delaying our Lord's coming. We can hasten His coming if we only give up the world and we live in righteousness. We love each other. Put away our squabbling. Put away our complaining. And the Lord will come quickly. May God bless you all as you continue to study this lesson and discuss in your classes. I invite you to pray with me as we close. Our gracious Father, our loving God and King, please bless your people. Help us, Lord, to live like your Son, Jesus Christ. And then truly this gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all the world. And then your Son will come. Please forgive us, Lord, if we are delaying your Son's coming. And please help us to live like you. We thank you so much for everything. We ask you, Lord, this prayer in Jesus' mighty and holy name. Amen.